Hi there. Thanks once again for tuning in to VNTV. This is Once to Watch. I am Akusia Echampoma. I have in the studios today a very important personality. Stay good to your seat. I'll introduce him after the break. Please, officer. You give us office. Come here, you are saying officer. Gaso, there is nothing. We are checking papers on this name. There is one certain guy who walks down one foot on that side. But I'm not and driving car. You are not driving car. Just Why sir, haven't you been picking your calls? I hope <laughs> what is this you're watching? Check that thing. Give it back! Wait! Give it this back! This is so funny. What program is this? I'm watching two papers on VNTV. VNTV? Oh, come on, nice. Everybody knows about VNTV. VNTV is an online TV. Wow. Yes. You can log on to www.vnationtv.com and you're ready to go. Just like that? Just like that. And the interesting thing is that we have so many amazing programs you can watch. And the coolest thing about VNTV is that, that you get to watch it anywhere. You can watch it on your smart TV, you can watch it on your smartphone, you can watch it on your laptop, iPad, anywhere. It's that cool. Wow. Let me get my stuff uh, so we can uh, go. Not too fast. Why? I thought you wanted us to go to the mall. Yes, that was then. But now, let us stay home and watch VNTV. <laughs> Are you serious? Very, very serious. <laughs> I thought you were mad before. That was before. Oh, who don't like a <laughs> 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 Welcome back. If you just tuned in, this is Once to Watch right here on VNTV. Let me just give you a brief about my guest for today. He is a media man. He is a former member of parliament who represented the NDC for Ablekuma South constituency and also a former minister of state. I welcome Honorable Fritz Raffo. Thank you. How are you? I'm very well, and how are you too? I'm very well, thank you. You're looking good anyway. Thank you. What's the secret? Can you just tell me what the secret is? I'm a relaxed is? gentleman nowadays. Why? Know? So you're not relaxed at first? No, I mean, when you're working very, very hard for, for your people, you know, you're always tense one way or the other. But now I'm, I'm, I've got a far more relaxing schedule. Mm. So I think it's very good that you should always have, I mean, a very low schedule. Uh, well, at a certain age, yes. Mm. As so you a young think you've man, gotten to that age? Yes, I've gotten to that age. How old are you? Well, uh, I'm 65. Wow. But you, you look fine and let me use the word handsome. You're very good for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome again to Once to Watch. Thank you. Thank now, you. when we mention the name Fritz Buffer, what should come into people's mind? Fritz Buffer. Well, that should come into people's mind. Well, I've been on the screens uh, on this con in this country uh, since 1989. Um, prior to that, um, I started off in television in 1965. So I think, um, you know, those who've been watching our television, uh, you know, since 1989 um, would know of me uh, that uh, I had a couple of programs. The first one was, I think, in 1987. That was the F&F &F show, which I did with uh, Tomian and Forsen. And then my flagship program, which was Sincerely Yours, which went on from 1989 to 2002. So in, a, in effect, I was a television personality. My face was on, on, on programs um, uh, in and out for uh, almost 10 years or more. And then I went into politics. Um, and as a member of parliament, naturally, I'd again be in the public, uh, um, public view. Um, and then I was a minister uh, for information for um, at least uh, for a year. And so, therefore, as a politician and as a media person, yes, I must be um, known by a few people in Ghana. Now, let's look at those times when, when you were doing, I mean, very serious movies compared to now. How do you see it? Would you, would you, would you look at it like, I mean, you regret going into it or it's better off than no, no, no. I mean the thing is that I've, I've always I have no regrets so what is what is important is that um, at a certain time I was uh, those days we had only one uh, television station in this country mm -hmm. uh, right now you have uh, over a hundred television stations and radio stations and all that and so it's more difficult uh, for you to break in or to to become uh, a watched program okay um, that's where the challenge is but even then we we we, we stuck to certain very high standards when we had um, very few uh, radio television uh, radio and television outlets in this country 
Now, let's, let's look at you being in the media. Mm -hmm. how, how long have you been in the media for? Well, <laughs> well, as I told you, in 1965, I, I, I started doing some form of radio work. So okay. I think I've been in, in the media for, I think, um, we're talking about 42 years. Wow. Yeah. Now, where are some of the media houses you've worked with? Oh, as I said, I worked for GBC as an artist uh, in 1965 when television came on. Um, then when I went into the media full-time uh, in 1984, I worked for Liberian Television. Then I went to work for Time TV's television in Britain. Um, I also worked for Channel 4. They had a program that I worked on. And over the years, I worked for uh, German television. I worked for um, Discovery Channel. Um, I worked for Japanese television in one way or the other. And um, again, um, I was a documentary maker. And I think I've, uh, the last count, I've done about 40 documentaries, um, both internationally and locally. All right, apart from my series, which was Sincerely Yours. And then I had a program, as I said, F and F with Tommy and Forsen, which was a comedy program. Then I did another comedy program called Fritz and Friends. Okay, um, so basically I've been in the media for quite a long time. 1965 is actually, uh, yeah, it's 52 years actually. Wow, and yeah. you are 65. 65. So that means you started very early. Yes, I Can was 13. Can you give 13. us a brief about your educational background? Well, I, I was educated, I went, my secondary school education was, um, I went to Premier College for a year and then I moved to Technology Secondary School, which is the University Secondary School because my father was the founder of that school okay. and he was Vice Chancellor uh, and he initiated the school. Mm. So he took me out of Premier College and put me in Technology Secondary School and that's where I did my O-Levels. And after my O-Levels I hung around a bit, I worked for GNTC. Um, as an accounts clerk and then in 72 I went to Britain to further my education. Um, I ended up with a management diploma and then I went to work for uh, one of these big companies. Uh, I did it as a management trainee for four years. Um, I didn't like it much working in retail so I moved mm -hmm. to advertising. Eventually I came back home in 1981. Um, it was very difficult so I left and went to Liberia and that's where I found my niche as a professional media man and um, that was it really um, and then I went back to Britain to work for British television and then I came back in 1985 and I haven't been away since I've been though I spent some time in Nigeria I spent a year in Nigeria doing something completely different mm. I was um, a consultant to the Sheraton mm -hmm. hotels I mean mm. um, because of my the, my love of history my love of tourism and things like that I became a consultant director for them and I stayed in Nigeria and I worked in Nigeria, I did television, comedy, I did all those things in Nigeria and came back again in 1991. In 1991 I, I met up with uh, the then head of state, um, flight lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings and I took to him in a very big way and um, eventually went into politics. Uh, I started handling all the events so it was actually like he was your inspiration. Yeah, in a way. But I, I was, I've always been political, one way or the other. I mean, since the overthrow of Kwame Nkrumah, um, it, it turned me into a political animal one way or the other. Okay, so um, I've been political. But active politics, I started working with um, Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings uh, when he was the PNDC chairman. And then also when we met him uh, into into the NDC, I was there working behind the scenes, handling the um, audiovisual aspect of it, uh, the media and all that, and, and also planning the events, uh, managing the events like all our rallies and our congresses and things like that for a long time. Now, you were, you were saying when you returned from Britain, things were hard for you. What, what was it about? Well, I came, I couldn't get a job. Um, I'd been working in advertising. I decided to come home for personal reasons. And then I found out that I couldn't get a job in Ghana. So eventually I, I ended up in Liberia. And that's where I, I started up, you know, television full time. Um, and, and that was it really. Ghana was difficult. They, they just had the uh, revolution. Um, things were really tight. I just come from Britain where everything was on the shelf. And mm -hmm. uh, I realized I, it, was, it was difficult. But I mean, going back to Liberia, you think everything was perfect for you in Liberia? No, it wasn't perfect. Actually, mm. I mean, I, I wouldn't have liked to have left Ghana at all. But at that time, things were, I, I, I wasn't settled. So I went to Liberia and I had the opportunity of settling. Uh, Liberia was then using the US dollar um, and they had everything. And, 
and they had a, they were, had a budding television network that was uh, industry was growing and I joined and helped uh, in, in, in maturing that industry. Now at what age did you discover that talent of acting? Oh I mean from, a, from primary school I was acting in plays. My father himself, my father was, a, was an actor, he acted in Boy Kumasino. So the and he was he produced um, uh, um, he produced the pirates of Pram Pram in Achimota mm. School and he was very musical. My grandfather was a schoolmaster and so therefore he and he played he played the piano. Um, so you know my father his brothers were all very musical and he himself was musical. So I was introduced into it as a young age and I, my, I loved films. I've been watching films since I was about four years old. And, and all that. So I picked up all those little things and uh, became, I started acting, presenting and all that. It came virtually, almost naturally. Now, let's, let's, look, let's look at your political life. Uh -huh. What really, aside looking at the former president inspiring you, what really led you into politics? Oh, you think the, the media wasn't paying that much? No, 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 it had nothing to do with, with money at all. In fact, I think um, uh, I was, I was <laughs> making far more money as a television person than as a, as a parliamentarian. Um, the thing is, I, I decided that I had to. I was always, I've always been political. I wanted to go into politics. I wanted to be in active politics. I wanted to represent the people of uh, Ablikuma South. I mean, I was born there. I lived there. I still live there. Um, and um, therefore, I, I thought that that would be something that I'd want to do. And I did it for eight years. And I realized that, you know, I mean, I'd done, I think I'd done my fill. And um, I wanted to go back into what I loved most, which was mm. the media and, um, uh, and into a non-political scheme of things, though I'm still very much involved with my political party, mm. you know, but not as an elected official. I don't want to be an elected official anymore. I want to, to con contribute my quota um, almost as a non-partisan citizen because I found out that, you know, when you, you come up with, with a, a plan or you come up with, with a suggestion, um, people always, you know, uh, turn into something partisan. And Ghana is above the two political, mm -hmm. main political parties. Mm -hmm. I think that... Um, Let's look at when you, when you came into politics, well, people didn't consider the fact that you were, you were into comedy and acting. Well, naturally they did. I mean, mm -hmm. Ghanaians What were, were some of the challenges? Oh, there are, I don't think there were any challenges. I mean, I was always a very confident uh, media person. Whether I was doing comedy or not, I mean, I knew as, as, as educated, I knew I could speak well. I knew that I had a certain presence. So I, I wasn't really worried. The thing was that uh, naturally, when uh, you go into uh, politics, you know, there's a lot of compromise. Um, there's a lot of, you know, going back on, on, on certain things because, you know, politics is not a very straight road. It's, it's a curvy road. Did you, did you for once in your life regret coming into politics? No. I've never regretted it. As mm. I said, no regrets. Even, even though you sometimes you hear things about people oh, saying yeah. about you. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, because the, I think I've been. I had some comments. Well, this he's a comedian and he's gone into politics. Yeah, people fine. are not taking you serious. No, no, no. The thing is that if you call me a comedian and you don't, I mean, comedy, comedy is one of the things I used to do. I do. I've done so many other things. I mean, I, I've taught English to English uh, children. I've. I've, I've lectured in history, I've acted in films, you understand? Uh, and so the, it was just one of those things. So if you said, if you, you, you said Fritz Bafo is a comedian, then you didn't know me. I mean, you didn't know me well enough to, even that means you only saw one aspect of my, of what I am. You understand what I'm saying? So it really never, never bothered me. That's interesting. I'm here with Honorable Fritz Bafo. I'll take a short break. Do stay with me. Gentlemen, this is the street where so many things happen. They're good, they're bad, and they're ugly. But don't worry, that is why I am here to give you the best gist when it comes to entertainment with your favorite celebrities. Catch me live on DNTV every Monday, 4 p.m. It's all about street vibes with legend. You welcome back. If you just tuned in, I'm here with Honorable Fritz Bafo. Honorable. Yeah. I hope you are still comfortable. I'm very comfortable. Let's look at comedy now compared yeah. to when you were in it. 
how do you say is it better than oh it's not a question no, it's a different kind of comedy i mean it's 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 more aggressive ours was about telling stories funny stories and uh, you know, uh, but now it's not about stories, about events, things happening mm. to you. You know, some of it is is even saltier. When we say salty, the, it's even raw. <laughs> you understand? I I couldn't get up and and and, and use a bad word or fall at a word on stage at the time. All right, and I won't. I, though I'll tell a joke with the maybe with sexual in in windows. It won't be blatant. Now they do everything. We have scatological humor, we have uh, lavatorial humor, we have all kinds of things. That, that's on me. But I, I can understand it. Now if you have to go back to comedy? I won't. You won't? No. Why? No, I won't go back to that kind of comedy. Maybe a comedy series, yes, I'll write a comedy series, but to do stand-up mm -hmm. comedy, I won't do it as I used to do it. If okay. I did it, it would be a one-off. Wow. Or yeah. well, you think when you go on the stage, people will not be willing to see you, especially looking at now everything is politics. Yeah. An MPP person I, I, will not I want can, to come and I watch. can tell political jokes. I can tell political jokes. I can go there if I want to. But that's not what I want to do. You know, I think that politics has invaded every, every nook and cranny of this country, and that, uh, it's not good. I think that the other things that we need to discuss that should not be partisan or politi over, overly political. What is Fitzbuffo's weakness? Weakness? Mm -hmm. uh, my weakness used to be beer, but I've stopped. <laughs> um, I, and I, I love clever women. That one too, you know, I, I like, I like uh, my weakness. I like, I like chocolate and I like ice cream. So when I give you chocolate and ice cream, that would be your weakness? My weakness, but I, I should, it's not good for me. So <laughs> <laughs> your weakness is never good for, for you. Really? Yeah, yeah. But it's still your weakness. Yeah, it's my So weakness. I'm sure when I want to, then I'll just give you chocolates and... Ice cream. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now let's look at, if NDC is back to power, yes. what, what position would, would nothing. you... Nothing. I'd like to be an advisor. I'd like to be in the background completely. What yeah. if it's offered to you? Uh, well, that is what, what I'm saying. I would, I would say no. You will say no. Yes. You would never want to be a minister again. No. Well, you, you think people because people come to you for money and all. No, 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 no. I just, I just don't want to do. There's a new look. I'm 65. Mm -hmm. I don't think that at 65 I want to be a minister. By the time, uh, if that opportunity comes, it may be four years, maybe eight years, maybe 20, 20 years, 10 years. I'll be too old. Mm. You understand? I want to do. I, mean, I told you I want to spend time with my grandchildren and my great grandchildren if I have them. Mm. You understand what I'm how saying? How many grandchildren do you have now? Uh, four. Four. Yeah. Okay. How many are you expecting? Oh, maybe if they all do well, maybe eight. Eight. Oh, and you think that's enough? Yeah, that's enough. Yeah. Okay. But then I also have uh, great nephews and great nieces and things like that. So yeah, family. You know. What are some of the things you've been able to achieve? With, for the past 65 years? 65 years. Well, <laughs> I think I leave that to posterity. I leave that to someone to say. But I think that um, I, 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 my father would have been proud of me. Uh, the fact that I, I finally you know, managed to get my master's degree and I also uh, became a member of parliament. And it'd be nice for Dr. R.P. Bafo to know that his son at a certain time, became a minister of state of the Republic of Ghana, where he worked hard for Ghana to attain independence. I also, I'm also happy that I'm, a, um, I'm a, I've been married for 32 years. Uh, I've got oh. children who are very, very successful, and uh, they're all growing up nicely. How many I children do you have, actually? I have four. Four. How yeah. many girls and how many boys? Three girls and one boy. Yeah. Now, if you were a president of Ghana, yeah. what were some of the things you implement? Well, the first thing is, um, I, I think I would have been circumspect before I implemented it. I would make sure that certain things were in place, and that's the way to go. Now, let me look at, let's look at the president's um, stand on homosexuality. I'm not, I'm not going there. I'm not going to talk about that. That, okay. is, that is new. Um, I think Ghanaians have not had a, a good conversation on that topic. So it would be wrong for me to start talking about what he said. Um, you know, Ghanaians are very emotive about this. This is an emotive uh, subject. And when it's emotive, then we, we get to the wrong conclusions or we get to conclusions that may not be, 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 be right. So I don't want to actually talk about homosexuality. Now before I go, let's look at where you see yourself in the next two years 
Let me let, let's see in the next two years. Next two years. Yes. I'd love to see myself sitting on the beach somewhere, legs crossed, looking at the sun and taking in the breeze. With your beer. No beer. Well, you stopped the beer. I've stopped Since alcohol. it's your weakness. Yeah, I've stopped it. Maybe licking an ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, how do you see Ghana moving now? Well, the thing is that I think we should we should we should start working um, very very hard to turn this country around. We've got all the potential, we've got all the resources and things like that, but we we've become too split along partisan lines, and I think that we should come together a little bit more. Thank Ghana you must unite. Why? Ghana must unite. I like that. Thank you very much, Honorable Fitzbra, for, for coming on Once to Watch. Thank you very much. I so much appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hope Nana. to see you again here some other time. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching Once to Watch right here on VNTV. Thank you to the production crew. Thank you, Pearl. Thank you, Emmy Dance Collection, for this beautiful outfit. I am Akusia Echampoma. See you same time next week. Keep watching VNTV, powerhouse of entertainment. Bye.